Welcome to the Bridge Church Midweek Podcast. We exist to connect people with others and God. We hope this week's episode helps you do just that. Enjoy. Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to the Bridge Church Midweek Podcast. My name is Tyler Wolf. I'm here with Pastor Bradley. What's up, guys? How you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you doing? So good. Yeah. And I'm here with Zoe Herring. Zoe. Hi. How you doing? I'm good. Okay. Uh, this is one of the episodes of the Midweek Podcast where we are sharing testimonies. Uh, we know, according to Scripture, that a person's story, no matter what it looks like, how ugly or some pe- or boring or whatever, no matter what a person's story looks like, it is useful for building other people up. And so we just invited you here to share some of your story. But before we dive into that, would you just share with us a little bit about who you are, how long you've been attending Bridge Church, maybe where you serve here at the church? Okay, yeah. So um, I've been going to Bridge Church for nine years now. Um, I, I am part of the worship team. I've been doing that for, well, I started out in the youth worship team yeah. um, when I was 13, I think. Um, been doing that ever since, and I love it. Um, I interned with Bradley for a little bit, and that was awesome, um, working with him, doing what he does. Um, for the past several months before everything was shut down, I did help out with youth worship again, which was kind of cool to see like where I started yeah. Kind of not really do that for a little bit and then go back and, and help out um, when they need me. So. And what instrument do you play? Piano. Piano, and you also sing. Yeah. Right. You have a great singing voice. Thank you. Bradley? Yeah, it's great. She's yeah. amazing. She also MDs for us some. Which what does that mean? That she is kind of like a musical director for us, which she'll guide the band. And um, she's learned how to listen for mistakes or things that need to be corrected and be able to do that on the fly. Her internship, I think she's not giving herself enough credit for <laughs> everything. Like, she can actually, if I'm out of town, she can do what I do. Yeah. And that's one thing that she has gotten in and she's learned and she's grown in that area. So, outside of actually helping us on the worship team, she does a lot of behind the scenes no. stuff. No. Normally, before COVID happened, I mean, you were actively involved in that. Now, to flesh out the MD thing, correct me if I'm wrong in my understanding, but. They are directing the song. They're speaking to a microphone that only the worship team can hear, so they're directing the song as well as uh, reprimanding musicians when they hit a wrong note. Am I, is that right or wrong? <laughs> I mean, we don't really reprimand, you know, reprimand the, the musicians. You just give them the silent treatment or? <laughs> just a look. I feel like when I was playing drums on the worship team, I, yeah, I feel like I've gotten a few dirty looks from the keyboard area of the stage. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joshing around. Hey, okay, so we want to hear your story. Would you tell us a little bit about what your discipleship journey has looked like over your, over your life? Yeah. About coming to Jesus, why you follow him currently. We'll just kind of hand you the microphone and let you take it away. Okay, yeah. So um, thinking back to when I was younger, there was never really a time where I could say I didn't know who God was. Um I guess I knew about him, but I didn't know, I didn't really know who he was. Um, I remember going to church, you know, at three, four, five years old, but it was kind of one of those, I went every once in a while when I was visiting my grandma for the weekend, Mm -hmm. or, um, you know, holidays, definitely holidays we would go, but it wasn't a regular thing for me, and I remember being frustrated with the idea of God, because I didn't understand, so I was like, well, if this is supposed to be you know, the super important thing, how am I supposed to believe in it if I don't understand, you know, all these different parts to it? So it was something for a while I wasn't really interested in. Um, I was also really young, so, you know, I'm trying to grasp these big ideas and ask all these questions and then get answers from people that I probably, I wasn't asking the right people. Mm -hmm. Um, So for, for a while I just wasn't interested And so we moved here, and we were trying out a bunch of different churches, and it was one of those, like, my family wanted us, the kids, to kind of have a say in what church we were going to, because we were going to be going there. That was going to be our church home. And where'd you move from? From Arizona. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, and so we tried out multiple churches and I was kind of like, yeah, we can go wherever you guys want because I don't really care. You know, like I'm not really going to be invested. I'm not going to, like I'll go because I have to, yeah. but I wasn't really interested. Um, so we came to, at the time we were called Waksha First Assembly of God. So we came here um, and for a while it was still the same thing. It was kind of like, okay, I have to wake up every Sunday, go to church, don't really want to, but you know, once I come home from church, then I can go back to, you know, doing my everyday whatever, go to school. Yeah. Um, and then my parents really wanted me to start going to the youth group, get to know some of the kids there, and it was also a way for me to make friends because we had just moved across the country. Yeah. And they were like, it'd be really awesome for you to make friends before you start school, um, make friends that are Christian. You know, like they really wanted me to have. A good, a good friend group. Can I ask you a question about your parents? At the time, do I hear you saying that like going to church wasn't necessarily an option? Like it's just kind of what your family did. Well, for for me, so my parents got divorced at a pretty when I was at a pretty young age. Mm-hmm. I lived with my mom, and my mom has never really been the church going yeah lady. Um, my dad and my stepmom, they would go to church when they could sometimes life got in the way and they had to work so they weren't able to go every week but I also wasn't right right but I wasn't always with them every weekend so it was one of those like I don't go to church but when I would go to see my dad over a weekend then I went to church because I was with them because that's just what that part of your family did right got it yeah um so yeah for them it wasn't an option for me it kind of was sure um so yeah I started going to youth group here and I felt really, really welcomed by the kids here, which was really awesome because at that point I was really bitter because I didn't want to move. And then I was, you know, upset with my family because they took me all the way across the country, away from my friends, away from my grandparents, away from, you know, my mom, all of that. So I was just a really upset 11 year old. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so coming here on Wednesdays started to become this place was my safe place. You know, there were people that I knew I could talk to, um, that I knew loved me. And I was like, you've only known me for like two months and you make me so happy, you know? So at that point, I think I, I became more invested and I was like, okay, now I want to go to church. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to start to understand because at that point I was a little older. So asking questions and having them being answered, like, well, I can understand that a little bit better now than I could you know, three years ago. Was yeah. initially though, like, was it more about, you said you enjoyed coming? Right. Was initially, was it more about you wanted to come just to hang out with friends or were you wanting to come to learn? Right. Spiritually yeah. grow? Like what, at first, what was that like? At first it was because I had friends here mm-hmm. and so I wanted to hang out with them. Sure. It wasn't, you know, like I want to grow. Um, and then I, this is really funny because I cannot tell you what we were talking about on church this Sunday. Um, but it must have been really good because I remember sitting by my dad and by the end of it, that's when I was like, okay, I think like this whole God thing, I really like how this sounds. And I think I finally understand and I'm trying to not cry because I don't want my dad to know that I'm crying, but I'm Mm -hmm. crying and I'm like super excited. And so I gave my life over to God, um, probably about a year after we moved here, a year and a half. So I was 12 years old and, um, I think that's kind of where that shift was, then I started coming to church because I wanted to learn and I wanted to understand. And I was super excited about it. Um, And so, you know, the next several years throughout middle school and then beginning of high school, I would, you know, go to camp, I would go to convention, I would, you know, get more involved by joining the worship team, all this stuff. And so I was super connected. And that part of my, my walk was really cool because it was just me learning, you know, learning about God, learning about how to be a Christian, learning about how to interact with other people. Um, And I remember just being really happy a lot. And so that was really awesome. Um, And then kind of like in the middle of high school, life happens again, you know, you have some things that kind of suck. And I didn't really fall away from God. But I didn't really turn to him when I needed to. Mm -hmm. And I tried to do things on my own. And then 
I have always, this is such a bad habit and I'm trying really hard to break it. But when I, when I'm going through something, I won't talk to anyone mm -hmm. because I'm like, I, I don't want to open up to anyone. Sure. I don't want to like, not my parents, not, you know, not my youth pastor. Um, and so that kind of, you know, was the same for God. I was like, I just don't want to deal with it. If I don't think about it, if I don't talk about it, then I don't have to deal with it. Yeah. Um, and in the long run, it, things build up. And so it was just really hard for me to, to deal with life and the things that I was going through. And for a while, I kind of, I lost myself. And I was kind of living every day, just, you know, either whether, so if I was going to school, then I would go to school, I would go to cross country, come home and eat, and I would go to sleep and I would just do the same thing every day. And it was mm -hmm. like everything I was doing was, was meaningless. And I was doing it because I had to. And there was no excitement anymore about what I was doing every day. And um, when I left high school, when I got out of high school and I was not at home for a little bit, it didn't really get better. And I thought it would because I thought my problem was like, I just need to get away from my parents or I just need to, you know, not be by all the kids I went to high school with. And I thought that it would make it better just by not being by people. Cause mm -hmm. I always thought, you know, not talking to people, not seeing people would make it better. And it didn't. And, um, you know, for a little bit there, I just had a really hard time with relationships. And then I was really, really, really hard on myself and down on myself. And eventually it got to the point to where I was like, okay, I do, I need to talk to someone now. Cause I, I can't do this anymore. You know, trying to pretend like I'm okay and dealing with things on my own. And I should have went to God first, but I went to my parents first. And at that point, you know, our relationship wasn't the best. And it was hard for me to talk to them. But then by the end of it, I was like, okay, like I'm going to be okay. And if I just get over, you know, my pride and start talking to people that actually care about me, um, I'm going to be fine. So, you know, I, I started rebuilding that relationship with my parents. And now I have an amazing relationship with my parents. And, you know, I, like, I don't live with them anymore. So I don't see them all the time. And I'm actually really sad about that because I love them to death. And yeah. now I just feel like they're, they're my best friends, you know. Yeah. And... Um, and then as far as church goes and everything, I was like, okay, I really need to, I need to have friends that I'm really close with because when I go through those hard things again, I don't want to try to do it by myself. And there really is a difference between talking to, like, friends that I have from high school, a lot of them aren't Christian. So there's a huge difference between talking to them and then talking to the people I know here because just they understand me on a different level because they know that I'm a Christian. They know that they can give me advice that that God would give me. You know what I mean? Um, and so the last year or two, I've really been working on my relationships with people at church because mm -hmm. that's important too. And then after building those relationships, I was like, okay, I'm doing the right thing, right? I'm talking to people more, I'm figuring my stuff out, but I'm still not talking to God as much as I should. So I'm building my relationships here on earth, but I'm not building my relationship with God as much, you know, like mm -hmm. I know he's still there. I know he still loves me. I still love him, but I'm not working on that. And I just remember one night I came home from work and it, I didn't have a bad day or anything like, you know, I was in a great mood, but I got home and I was like, why am I not doing this? Like, why am I not talking to God? Why am I not reaching out to him? Um, why am I not worshiping him as much as I used to when I'm home? You know, like, cause I love worship. Like, why, why am I not doing this? And so I get home and I'm sitting on my bed and I just start crying and I'm like, why am I crying? And I'm bawling my eyes out. And then it turns into one of those like ugly sobs. And I'm like, okay, I need to chill out a little bit. And, um, and then God just starts talking to me. And then he's like, you know, go grab your Bible. And he has me reading all sorts of different things. And then 
it was just, it was a very emotional night. But it was really awesome because God was like, I know you haven't come to me when you needed, when you needed to. And I know you've kind of been distant, but like I've been right here next to you through it all. And then he would remind me of these things where, or like situations where God was there and I guess I didn't really realize it. So then I'm crying more because I'm like, ah, oh, God is really awesome, yeah. <laughs> you know. So um, I guess overall, like it, it's really cool to see how my walk has started with, you know, not, not being interested in God and then growing like that foundation, understanding who he is and everything, having that little tough spot in life and then really using what I learned so many years ago and changing my relationship with people and changing my relationship with God and changing my outlook on things and changing the way that I think about things. And um, it's, it's really cool because yeah. I can say now that I'm, I'm happy and I'm able to deal with things a lot easier because at the end of the day, like it's, it's not the end of the world. And I think that's part of my problem too. Like I get so wrapped up in whatever, you know, mm -hmm. is going on yeah. and I get in my head and I'm like, you need to chill out. Like, it's really fine. And then, um, knowing that everything is in God's hands too, like, I'm like, okay, I'm definitely fine. Yeah. You know? So, um, the past, the past several years have been really exciting because mm -hmm. I think spiritual growth, like really deep spiritual growth is so cool to see because everyone else might not be able to see it all the time, but I know it's there and God know, God sees it and knowing that he's happy makes me happy. So Yeah, I think that's really cool though that you just use the words like you built a foundation and then you went through all of these bad things, Yeah. but then at the end God was still there for you. And I think that just goes to show you like the importance of like you built that foundation early on like when you put a foundation on a house, there's going to be cracks and there's going to be things that come right. in it through the years, but the house still stands, right? And that's the same thing that you're just describing. So you using that language is like really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Had this foundation, you went through this hard time and you're struggling, but then you came on the other side of it and God's like, I've been here. Right. Yeah. I'm still here. Yeah. Like yeah. that's, that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, I, what encourages me a ton from your testimony is like going back to your early life in, when you first get to Wisconsin is church wasn't, you guys didn't seem, your family didn't seem to treat church like it's a quick fix, but more of a redemptive rhythm of your right. life. You're like, this is just what we do. And you didn't expect, like no one expected, we're going to go to church and there's always going to be an angel right. overnight. You know yeah. I mean? it's like, <laughs> no, we're going to build this rhythm into our life. Yeah. And you said it, it was like a year before you know, you started to see differences, right. and then I think it was years before you said, okay, I'm ready to be a Christian. Right. Because this church isn't like a pill we take that changes everything. Yeah. yeah. No, it's a rhythm, and you, you now as an adult seem to treat church, not, again, not as this thing that's going to fix your problems or even make you feel better, but a source of connection. Right. Um, with others and with God, and I think that's so important. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's super cool. I'm really encouraged by your story. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, yeah. of course. Bradley, you got any closing thoughts? I don't think so. I mean, that was great. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I know a lot about you, you know, from you interning, but I just learned a whole nother like, yeah. avenue <laughs> of your story, which is, it's encouraging. I think a lot of people listening to this that um, either are young adults who have gone through what you've go, gone through are going to be encouraged by this. But I would say, like, for you parents out there, it's just a reminder of how like important it is to instill these things into mm -hmm. our kids and then also not to be discouraged if like in the instant your kids don't grasp onto it because right. like you're a, you're just like a walking example of it takes time but if you're consistent in showing our kids like the importance of these things they may not seem like they're listening or getting it but seeds but are being they are <laughs> that, yes yeah. that's a good way seeds are being planted so yeah. like it, you're you're going to touch so many different people with just being open with, with your walk so yeah it's cool all right well that's it that's it for the midweek podcast so thanks for being here yeah of course pastor bradley yeah love you always fun love you too man all right later <laughs>